Madison Square Garden. 11 p.m. here on the East Coast alongside Michael Leaves. I am Doug Kaziri, and we'll be with you for the next 30 minutes or so. So that covers the NBA yes. where chalk held true. Cavs won. <laughs> Uh, Not so much in college. No. If you were a top 10 team entering Saturday in college basketball, you were in trouble whether you were at home or on the road. Let's show you what happened between John Calipari's 8th ranked Kentucky squad visiting number 24, Florida. De'Aaron Fox missed the last game back out there today, finished with 19. Kentucky down four. But didn't the Gators just take over the game? Kentucky didn't look well, didn't look good on either end of the court, offensively, defensively, and the Gators made them pay. Now, this is the 137th time that Kentucky and Florida had played basketball. In those previous 136 meetings, Kentucky had never gotten beaten as bad as they did tonight. They lose this game by 22. It's also the second largest loss for John Calipari since he's been at Kentucky. The Cats have now lost three of their last four games. What is going on in Lexington? That's a question a lot of media members had for John Calipari after the game. But again, the highlights speak for themselves. Gators running, Gators doing whatever they want to do, and Calipari not pleased as Kentucky goes down big. Here's Calipari. They to the Florida. They played great. Kids fought. Uh, we shoot 30% in the first half. We're down 20 rebounds, and we still have a chance. And uh, just you can't have three, four guys not play well and – I think uh, having guys out kind of got us a little screwed up, but I don't want to take away from what Florida did. They just beat us from the tip to the end of the game. Questions? Cal, when we asked the guys about the defensive breakdowns, they, they attributed to communication. Is that your take on it? I'll have to watch the tape and see. But it was they shot 76%. Maybe at the end it shot 80% because they were getting layups. What happened rebounding-wise, John? Was it just hustle? Just beat us. Beat us to every ball. Is that heart, desire, talent? Maybe a little bit of everything, and you have an off day. You know, it, it's, you know, we got to go back and, 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 and get in the groove of how we're playing. We, that's the first time De'Aaron's played in six days. The other side of this is what the, I don't think they get yet is that every game we play is like this. And it gets to where every game you walk into, you're trying to get going, um, you know, and, and I just want to see him fight and try. And, you know, uh, we did for a while, but Bam can't start the game the way he did. Malik can't play the way he did in the first half. Now, Isaiah, again, had four turnovers. That's 10 in the last two games. Probably have the ball in his hands too much. So there's a lot of things we have to deal with, but we can't have a bunch of guys. Right now, the four position is back to where it was at the beginning of the year. We got to get that guy back. So we got a lot of stuff we got to do, and, and I'll say it, I still I love this team. I think we got a talented group. Um, we we got to get back into what we have to do and be real specific with them and then hold them accountable. I mean, if if they're playing defense like that, they think that's acceptable, and that comes back to me. Yeah. Then, Pretty rare this season that teams have taken the other. All right, here's the deal. Kentucky, you are not alone. In this trend today, Kansas had won 54 straight home games as the longest active streak in the NCAA heading into this game against Iowa State. Frank Mason, the third in transition and one. He'd make the free throw to complete the three-point play. Kansas took a two-point lead, but back come the Cyclones. Monte Morris knocks down a three. Iowa State up one. Next, Kansas possession. Mason drives again. Didn't get the bucket, but he did get fouled. Problem is... He missed the first free throw. He wouldn't make the second, though, so we got a tie game at 82. And then he has a chance to win it at the buzzer. He had yet to miss from the field until that shot right there. Five more minutes of play in Lawrence. In the OT, Iowa State up two. Deontay Burton knocks down a three. Extends that lead to five. 30 seconds remaining. Iowa State up one. Donovan Jackson all alone the corner. So time winding down. 15 seconds ago, Kansas down four. No timeouts. Devontae Graham not giving up just yet. He tried to get the call with a little kick out for the four-point play. Didn't get it, so they're down one. Now they're down three. Six and a half to go. Chance at the buzzer. It's short. The streak is over. 92-89 the final. 
54 games in a row, no longer at home. Here's Bill Self. Yeah, sucks. Uh, but 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 it's not. It, it doesn't suck because it's an end of a winning streak. I could care less about that. I just care about our team and 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 obviously uh, uh, you know performing better. We actually played pretty good the first half. Uh, but but th th they played with house money today, and I'm sure Steve would say the same. They came in and played with a free mind, and we you know we tried to tell our guys you know they're going to come in and let it fly. That's their chance to make a lot of threes, and and, and we didn't we didn't defend it. Wednesday night, Baylor nearly snapped Kansas's home win streak. So back at home, where they've won 13 straight, hosting Kansas State. And the Wildcats came out sharp, especially on defense. Turnovers into points. Barry Brown, the pick, and the bucket. How about this first half for Baylor? Fewest points in a half, 22. Largest halftime deficit this season, 15. But Baylor, 7-1, when trailing at the break so far. They trailed by as many as 19 in the first half. Big comeback. Inside a three and a half off the steal. Miss Jonathan Motley. He had 17 and 14. The dunk and the foul. Baylor down four. Same margin. Final minute. Manu Lakoff, the Miami transfer. Look where he is on the B. All nylon. One point game. Two point game now. Six seconds to go. Motley with a chance for the tie. Hangs on the rim. Trickles off out of bounds. Bears get one more crack. 1.6, the alley-oop to Motley, and he's blocked. Tough, tough few days for Baylor. Nearly win at the Fog, come home and lose to K-State. All right, we're just checking them off the list in the top 10, especially Big 12 teams at home. West Virginia, ranked seven, taking on Oklahoma State. Devon Dillard setting the tone for what would happen in the second half of the Cowboys. That is called athleticism when you can jump from outside the painted area and go angular with your dunk over a couple of dudes in the crowd. Yeah, y'all should be quiet. Someone comes to your house and treats you that way. Back to the game, though, in the actual meat of the game. Lamont West goes up for a charge. He's called, excuse me, goes up for a shot, called for a charge. Bob Huggins can't believe it. He ends up on the floor taking another look. He moves his left foot. I didn't know. And he, he leaned in the whole thing. Huggins gets a technical. Cowboys hit both free throws. They win at 82-75. First loss to OK State for West Virginia as a ranked team. Miles Simon was there. Miles, what did we see? Well, I think we learned tonight that the Oklahoma State Cowboys are no fluke now in the Big 12. After starting 0-6, they've now won four straight conference games, and they proved themselves on the road against one of the best teams in the country, the West Virginia Mountaineers. And, and the trio of Jeffrey Carroll, Phil Forte, and Juwan Evans are one of the best trios in all of college basketball, all of them in double figures tonight. They handled this Mountaineer pressure, and this is a team that is really riding the wave of confidence and positiveness that Coach Underwood has given them on a nightly basis. And watch out for them over the last month of the season to make a real impact in the Big 12. So again, if you're a top team in the Big 12 today and playing at home, uh, trouble. Baylor ranked second, Kansas third, West Virginia seventh. All went down today at home to unranked opponents. First time in the AP poll era that three top ten teams lost at home to unranked opponents on the same day. It's just a fourth time the three top ten teams from the same league lost on the same day, regardless of their opponent's rank. Another top five team in action. Losable game at Oregon. That's Arizona. And uh, real strange. Now, we know about... Crowds that stand until the home team scores the first bucket. Well, Oregon's on the board. And what's going on here? That's talcum powder. Play has to be stopped. Bill Walton on the call and thinks a uh, Grateful Dead concert broke out. He's ready to celebrate. <laughs> well, you know what? Laughing aside, had to be cleaned up. Delayed about three minutes. Dana Altman, the coach of the Ducks, says no more. Well, Arizona was hoping it'd be delayed three hours instead because Oregon just absolutely spanked them. 10 of 14 from downtown in the first half, including Tyler Dorsey, four of four. Oregon up 20 at the break, 38 to 18. The Wildcats had 18 points. 
The Ducks had 10 made threes. It's an Arizona team that many thought were possibly the best in the country since getting Alonzo Trier back. They've won 15 straight, but that win streak came to a screeching halt. Dorsey finished six of six from downtown, and Oregon pounds Arizona by 27. And as Michael told you, Kansas' home winning streak is over, so now Oregon owns the nation's longest active win streak in D1, 40 straight. Must be that funky design on the court. So here's the question. Could another top 10 team go down? Well, that's Tony Bennett, his Virginia squad ranked ninth. And here's the actual truth of the matter. They set the tone for the entire day for the, all the poll teams because they lost to Syracuse. But they lost it in very familiar fashion. They had a big lead at halftime in this game, which reminded everybody of the time they faced each other last year in the Elite Eight, where they were up 16, end up losing to Syracuse as the Orange move on to the Final Four. So that's what happened last year. So maybe Syracuse went to halves like, yo, we just did this to these cats last season. Let's do it to them again. That's exactly what they did. They came out smoking in the second half. Andrew White knocks down a three. That ties the game at 36. And then the very next possession, Tyler Lydon trailing the play. That's a deep three. Part of a 19-2 run that gave Syracuse a 39-36 lead. Now, of course, Jim Beheim was going for win number 1,000 in this game, even though the NCAA vacated 101 of his previous wins. So they say he's at 899. Everyone in Syracuse says this is 1,000, and that's how they celebrated it because they win the game 66-62. All the fans giving Beheim love, and he spoke to Kaylee Hartung after the game. To get this win today against that coach and this team means more to me than all the other. Whatever number it is I have, I've been a part of a 1,000 wins here. We may not have that many on the record, but I've been here for a 1,000 wins. That's, that's a lot of wins. I came here when I was 17 years old, and uh, I'm still here, which... It's kind of hard to believe, but it's been a great run. I've had great players, great coaches. This might be one of our best wins ever. Well, that's saying a lot from a Hall of Fame coach. Uh, again, as we were talking about, crazy day in college basketball because six teams ranked in the top ten. Baylor, Kansas, Arizona, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Virginia all lose, all but two of them to unranked opponents, and that ties the record for the most top ten teams losing on any given day. And it's the first time that it's happened since 1994. Well, of course